Is everybody in Vermont an old hippie? Do they put syrup on everything here? And are all the young people leaving the state? We're gonna talk about those things and more. So grab a creamy and let's hop in the Subaru. We're gonna unbox the state of Vermont. Ah, Vermont, or should I say Vermont? Because that's how they say it here. It's a very small state in both size and in population. A very rural place, which is mostly trees, farmland, cows, and old white people. It's a state that's not understood very well because not many people have actually been to Vermont or know anybody from Vermont or have ever seen an actual image of Vermont. It does exist. It's part of New England. A state rich in history. Vermonters sort of have their own culture and way of life that's kind of unique. If you're thinking of moving here, you're very rare because nobody's moving here. But to get a complete understanding of this teeny tiny state, we need to look at a map, which has the state's various regions, and then check out each area individually. This is Vermont. As you can see, there's actually something going on here. A few bright spots in terms of culture and in diversity. Most of what we'll talk about is stuff that Vermonters know very well. We're going to begin up here in northern Vermont. This is where you're going to find most of the rural farms and conservatives in this state. They call this the northern country, pal. This is where the macho men roam on the range, where them tough dudes wrestle steer and woo all the purdy women with their muscles and mustaches. <laughs> JK, they aren't macho up here. There aren't any macho men in this state. Most of the farms up here are run by wimpy, hippie cow farmers. Dairy is a big deal in Vermont. This state only produces about 1% of the nation's milk, but for them, it's a lot. However, while Vermont might be known for its dairy production, dairy only makes up half a percent of Vermont's total exports. And no, there's not more cows than people. Vermont has more than twice as many people as cows. Back in the day, land was cheap and taxes were low in the state. And a lot of people in Vermont made their living in dairy or lumber or maple syrup. For a Vermont resident, syrup is the thing they take pride in. The state chugs out 2 million gallons of maple syrup every year. That's more than twice as much as the next closest state, New York. Over here on this side of the state is what Vermonters call the Northwest Kingdom. A kingdom it is not. It is made of Essex, Orleans, and Caledonia counties. It makes up about a fifth of the state's total land area. There's 55 towns and gores here, and all are very small. The largest city out this way has only about 7,000 people. Many of the towns cater to tourists or Vermont's retirees. There's inns and antique shops and little farm stands everywhere. People trek up here and hike and camp. Very small town life indeed. The little town of Stowe is up here too. It's one of the highlights of this state of not many lights. They call themselves the ski capital of the east. It's home to Stowe Mountain Resort at the base of Mount Mansfield. There's only 4,000 people here, and you'd struggle to find anybody who wasn't white. It's a lot of second homes, and it's relatively expensive to live here. Places are around a half a million bucks. Jake Burton grew up in Stowe, and he invented snowboarding here. But most people still ski in this state. Barry City's in northern Vermont, as is the town of St. Albans. Both are low lights in this state. Barry has almost 10,000 people, making it the state's fourth largest city. My God, my God. It's known for its granite quarries, and it boasts the prized Barry Granite and the world's largest deep hole granite quarry. Barry is the poorest city in the state, and the state's fifth most dangerous. More than a quarter of people here live in poverty. St. Albans is also poor and dangerous. It's not as poor as Barry, but the crime here makes it the worst of all Vermont cities. Newport is also a very poor place, and some say Newport is the welfare capital of Vermont. Weed is legal in this state now, so that's not going to ruffle many feathers, but hard drugs, particularly crack and heroin, are the problem in all three of these cities. Almost 2% of Maine's entire population was being treated for opioid addiction this year. 2%, folks. That's an epidemic. Many of them are on welfare, too. Now, this is a good time to talk about Bernie Sanders, the self-proclaimed socialist senator from Vermont. He's very popular here. But while Vermonters complain about the taxes, at the same time they vote to tax themselves to death. And a lot of that tax money goes to welfare. Vermont ranks third in the country for welfare spending. Some people in Vermont say welfare is pushed on people. So it's clear that the older white folks in Vermont don't mind paying money out of their own pockets to support drug habits and folks who are chronically out of work here. Vermont as a whole though isn't very poor and the crime is relative. While places like Barry City and Albans stand out as poor and dangerous, they're actually not too bad compared to the rest of the country. Vermont ranks 11th lowest in the country for poverty rates, and it's the third safest state. 
Now an interesting twist to this involves Vermont's religiousness, or lack thereof. This part of the country is the least religious of all, and Vermont is pretty much the least religious of all states. However, Vermont is pretty much the safest state. Now if you look at a map which shows states ranked by religion and compare that to states ranked by crime, you'll see the most religious states are some of the most dangerous, and the least religious are the safest states. So why do the states with the most religious people have the most criminals? Jesus is all WTF, y'all. I mean, what does that say about religion in America? Of course, the most well-known place in Vermont outside of the methadone clinic is Burlington, perhaps one of the finest cities in New England. This is the largest city in the state at 43,000 people, everyone. Nearby South Burlington has 18,000 people. The Burlington metro area has a third of this state's total population. This part of Chittenden County is where almost all of the wealth and jobs are. It's culturally and ethnically diverse and welcoming. Nearby in Essex is Global Foundries, a former IBM factory which spits out semiconductors for computers and cell phones. More than half of Vermont's total monetary exports are these circuits used in computers. South Burlington also has a lot going on. Ben & Jerry's was founded here, but then Ben & Jerry's got bought by Unilever, which also makes soap, which is weird. Vermonters still eat it, but they swear it doesn't taste as good as it was when it was a small town thing when the cartons look like this. Nearby is Lake Champlain, a really pretty lake that shares its shores with New York State. Vermont doesn't have any oceanfront, but most of the state's surrounded by water, either by this lake or by the Connecticut River. Central Vermont is even less exciting than the northern part of the state, if you can believe it. Montpelier, the state's capital, is here. It only has 7,800 people, making it the smallest state capital in the country, and possibly the most boring, though it would be hard to measure that. The only reason anyone comes to Montpelier is to pay a traffic ticket or do some other court stuff. There isn't even a McDonald's here, for Christ's sake. Or a Target. There's not a Target in this whole state. How do you do it, Vermont? Did you know they didn't have a Walmart until 1996? I didn't. Well, that's not a bad thing. But people bag on Walmart all the time, Happy, and everybody shops there every now and then. I would never get caught at Walmart. I have an image. <laughs> you worked there once, Karen. What are you talking about, woman? Central Vermont is also more small towns and varying degrees of boring and drugs. A few places of note in this part of the state that aren't a boring state capital include Rutland, Norwich, and Killington. Rutland has almost 17,000 people, making it a mini metropolis here. There's some sort of entertainment in Rutland. You can get a decent home here for a couple hundred grand, but it won't go up in value very much. Norwich calls itself the richest city in the state. Families here along the Connecticut River bring in about 150 k a year. Good for you, Norwich. Killington's a ski town. There's a lot of second homes here. It's actually really affordable for a ski town, home price-wise. In total, Vermont boasts 20 ski resorts and 30 cross-country resorts. Good for you, Vermont. But for the most part, it's just small town after small town, which is what makes Vermont, Vermont. So we have a Robert Frost Museum, a Grandma Moses Museum, a granite uh, quarry, Ben and Jerry's, and the most boring capital in the country. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> as much as they can like feel aloof or something, one thing I have loved just growing up here is like you get to know your community very well. There's a lot of um, a lot of people pulling together. And you can go places and run into people. You know, it has a, a small town feel to it, which is very nice. Now down here in Lower Vermont, and it's a lot more, you guessed it, small towns and skiing. Many of the smaller towns in Lower Vermont cater to tourists. There's a lot of people from other states that flood this area during the fall when the leaves change. Leaf peepers from New England pack the roads, but they are a necessity to Vermont's economy. Manchester is a touristy town. Brattleboro is very liberal with the big gay scene and lots of arts. Bennington is also super touristy. Depending on where you live down here, you can get a home close to town that's around 200K or somewhere way off in the woods that's closer to 700K. Many of the people in Lower Vermont make their living in small business. Stuff like mom and pop restaurants, coffee shops, furniture stores, and hardware stores. More than half of Vermonters are employed in small business, which have been crushed with closings. If you're not a teacher or you don't work in tourism or in healthcare, there aren't a lot of options for jobs here. Now, we talked about Senator Sanders earlier, and we talked about taxes. Taxes and regulations are also a big reason small businesses are closing down in Vermont. High taxes make it harder for these businesses to make a profit, and restrictions make it hard for them to even open up in the first place. That's one big reason folks are leaving, especially the younger people. While there are 
affluent liberal flatlanders moving up from southern New England into Vermont to retire. There's more people going than coming. Vermont has even been recruiting millennials to move to this state, my God. Younger people don't like the outdoors like they once did, and they want good jobs. Vermont has a crisis going on, people. It's already the third oldest state in the country, and Vermont's birth rate is the lowest of all U.S. states and going down. If it weren't for this state's loose welfare laws, you can bet even more younger people would leave. Maybe that's one reason they give away all the food stamps here, to keep the young and poor from leaving. Vermont considers itself a very progressive state, and its history backs up that claim. They were the first to grant civil unions and the first to legalize same-sex marriage. This state takes pride in being the first state to pass new laws. They outlawed billboards. They're very environmentally conscious here and all about green this and green that. NBC News called it the greenest state in the country. Vermonters express these political views with signs in their yards and with bumper stickers. While the rest of America stopped putting bumper stickers on our cars in the 80s, Vermont kept doing it. Now they have more bumper stickers on their cars now. Stuff like save the earth, stop bombing things, no fracking, no drilling, free welfare, and 802 life. That's their area code. But they're not all socialist liberal hippies. They have very loose gun laws for one. Vermont is actually about average when it comes to the percentage of residents who vote Democrat. You might not know that. Culture-wise, it's a lot of hiking and skiing and outdoorsy stuff. There really isn't a Vermont cuisine that'll knock your socks off. We already mentioned maple syrup, which is good enough to get a Vermonter out of bed in the morning. And no, we're not talking about that Aunt Jemima shit. Aunt Jemima Light? Aunt Jemima Light. The surprisingly thick syrup with one-third less calories than the leading brand and no artificial sweeteners. It's too thick to be light. They're really into craft beers up here. Magic Hat is probably the most well-known brewery in Vermont. Long Trail, Switchback, and Otter Creek are others. The hippie scene here produces hippies. The rock band Fish hailed from here. It's 95% white in Vermont, and many people are middle-aged. So whatever you think middle-aged white people do, that's what you're going to find people in Vermont doing. Small towns means they sit around and chit-chat and gossip. Vermonters tend to be a bit reserved and a bit private, which some people interpret as being hostile. It's a very close-knit society. It's the kind of place where you can't flip somebody off because they're going to remember you. Unless they're from Massachusetts, then it's okay. Due to the terrain and weather up here, a majority of folks drive Subarus. If five people were driving on their way to the store, how many of those five would have a Subaru Forester? Um, probably like, okay, you said five, maybe like two or three of them. Would have a Forester? Like there's a ton of Subaru Foresters around here. What's and the all... most popular color? Um, I'm going to say like a, a weird green, like kind of a light. I don't know if you can all just like picture what shade I'm thinking of, but kind of like that light green olive-ish color. So if, if I drive an olive green Subaru Forester and I park at the store and I exit the store and it's snowing a little bit, is it going to be really hard for me to find my car? Am I going to be like, is it like, that's my car, that's my car, that's my uh, car? No, because you'll probably have a lot of bumper stickers on it. <laughs> and so, so you'll know which one is yours. Weather-wise, it's brutal for much of the year. Of course, winter means snow. Vermont gets more snowfall than any other state. And it snows for about 54 days a year here. Winter months can be long, cold, and gloomy. Then the snow melts and you get mud season. Then spring. The summers are super enjoyable up here, as are autumns when the leaves look like this. Then before winter comes, there's stick season, which is when the trees lose their leaves. But even the most brutal winters aren't enough to convince everybody to stay away. My friend Diego, who lives in Puerto Rico, says he wants to move to Vermont. Why do you want to move to Vermont, man? So I love, you know, I was looking for some states in New England, and uh, Vermont seems the most quiet and the most peaceful. It's, it reminds me of Puerto Rico, um, some, some places. And I want that nature thing, too. <laughs> so Vermont ri reminds you of Puerto Rico? Well, it doesn't remind me. Uh, Weather-wise, it's not even close. But the nature-wise, it's beautiful. Have you ever been anywhere where it was really cold and snow before? No, I haven't. <laughs> Have you ever been in snow before? No. I know there's no, there's not a lot of, uh, yeah, it's mostly white people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, I love, 
I know Ben Ben and Jerry's is over there. That's pretty cool. Uh, I guess a lot of ice cream, a lot of hiking. I guess. Uh, I don't want to be rude, but <laughs> yeah, mainly a lot of uh, white people things. And I don't know if there's a lot of beaches in Vermont. Um, let's say eat. There's not a lot of Puerto Rican food in Vermont. Um, Somebody from Vermont should reach out to that guy. I mean, you're recruiting millennials to move to your state. Here's one that needs an invitation. Vermont's a very quiet, peaceful sort of place. There's a lot of history here. It's very clean. Many are deeply connected to the state through family, idealism, and community. The population is highly educated and most people here are healthy. But that's not nearly enough to keep people from leaving. They want jobs and fun. And for the most part, Vermont is neither one of those. Right now, it's pretty much a state of haves and have-nots. The middle class is being squeezed out, and families aren't making this their home as often anymore. As this state tries hard to stop people from leaving and to lure people to move in, they have to balance that without eroding their humbler traditions. Okay, so we did a pretty good job of looking at the state of Vermont and all the different areas and the types of people that live here, didn't we? Yeah, we did. It's a really small state, and they lead a slow-paced lifestyle here. If you're thinking of moving here, great! Bring some friends, they need people, and bring a job. And would somebody please bring me some Ben and Jerry's? Vermont is a pretty cool place. There's a lot of trees, and they are so great. They are all hippies, and they don't eat meat. Instead, they drink syrup from all the trees. Cause everybody in Vermont drives a Subaru. Drives a Subaru, 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 drives a Subaru. I love Vermont. I love Vermont. I love, I love, I love, I love Vermont. I love Vermont. I love Vermont. I love, I love, I love, I love Vermont. Now we talked a lot about how Vermonters are having a hard time with drug addictions. If you're going through a tough time with drugs, there's all sorts of people who can help. HealthVermont.gov has all sorts of resources that you can look at to see what's best for you. It's never too late to start a better life. You can do it. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.